hello, hello, and welcome everyone. I think I might be a little bit behind, lagging, and or delayed, but that's okay. We're going to make the best of the situation for what it is. In fact, let me just take myself off the screen. That way, that makes it just that much easier for everything to be seen. Let's see if I could do that. Uh-oh. There we go. Good. Okay. Can you hear me? Somebody give me a good, like, yay, if you can hear me. Throw me something in the comments. I am so excited to be here with you guys tonight. Hopefully you can hear me. You're not just looking at the screen. <laughs> Anybody who could hear me, just give me a good thumbs up, a yay. We can hear you in the comments. Awesome. Yay. Fantastic. Okay. So I'm going to dive right in. This is going to be a really great lecture, a really fun one tonight. And, you know, I think the biggest determination of your momentum is being able to individualize how you're going to achieve such success. So tonight is going to be very interactive. Okay. So I know what happens typically when you get out of a course, you get out of that OMT course, you've taken your first one, you feel on top of the world. I know all this information. Oh my gosh. I'm like practically a myo genius almost, but I also don't know what I'm doing. And I have all these notes and I really need to review everything again. And you know what? Maybe I don't know as much as I thought I did. And that's okay. A lot of times you'll you'll experience that with anything that you get into that's brand new, right? Can you imagine if your hygiene class or your dental course was only like a month or two long? And then at the end of that, they were like, go be free, go into the world. So that's okay. It's a lot of information, especially to get into a brand new career, a specialty and to master it. So tonight we're really gonna take you from if you're feeling that level of like confused, I don't know what to do, to feeling super confident. And I know that for myself, I am a, a former teacher of a course that would leave people that way. And yes, I, I did immediately regret that decision. And I'm moving things forward the, in my new path now and what I'm doing. I want to make the industry better because it is shameful that an industry that starts with dentistry, where we are the forefront of the field, dentistry began this over a century ago to now where not many are practicing and or not practicing full time and or just not practicing at a high level. So this is something that I am personally on a mission to change and I'm looking forward to establishing a brand new step forward. So trust me, before you attack me and like, hey, you used to be one of those teachers or some of my students might be in here like, hey, you messed me up. I get it. I get it. Listen, we learn and we grow. Okay. So what commonly happens, this actually happened just the other day. You see February 10th, this posted up. And a lot of times this is how you wind up in your first course, right? Like, hey, anybody have any recommendations for a course? And as soon as I saw that, my heart sank because, oh, what a rookie mistake. And I get it. Everybody does it, right? When I was getting into Mayo, there was no forum. There was no group that I could go and ask about this. Nobody knew what it was that I was doing. And anywhere that I searched, it really just led me to one or the other direction. It was, you can go with this organization or that organization. Well, what's the difference between the two? No, no one knows, right? So it's, interesting to try to navigate when there's like 15 different courses that you can choose from. I get that. But this isn't the best way for you to really navigate. And I hope, I sincerely hope that you would stop telling people to do that um, and to, you know, reinforce what it is that they're doing by providing them with inefficient answers by just saying, take this course or take that course because you're going to wind up with them being here. OK, so don't do that to people anymore. Next time you see a post like that, tell them, stop that. Don't ask in a group. <laughs> that was my exact response to go. Don't start by asking in a group. Historically, 
we're not good at just taking a course and mastering it. You have to know what you want out of the course. You have to absolutely know what your path forward is beyond the course. If you haven't taken a course yet, thank goodness that you're here on this live. If you have taken a course, it, it's never too late. We're always learning. We're always growing, right? right? But please start correcting people when they make this rookie mistake. You want them to have more in-depth conversations with you, have more in-depth conversations with themselves to figure out what it is that they want out of the course and more in-depth conversations with the people who are teaching the course. You have to know who's going to be teaching you this stuff and you have to be able to ask them the questions that are going to get you the best outcomes. How are you going to best utilize their information in your goal of insert goal here? Okay. So I just had to get on my little uh, soapbox, I had to get on my soapbox and do that so that you could go tell all your friends what not to do when they want to get into my O. Uh, and then, you know, all copacetic beyond that. So let's dive in because tonight we are going to have so much fun. We are really going to embed in your mind what your next step is, and this is specific to you. So get ready. We're going to have a blast, but you're going to need something. Is a pen and paper and somewhere to take notes, or I should say somewhere to take notes. I am big on pen and paper. If you were to see my desk right now, you would see five or six different notebooks. I have a whole thing full of pencils, a lot of pens. I am all about paper and pen. So for me, that's where I would be taking notes. For you, it might be taking notes on an iPad, on your computer, dropping notes into Google Docs, dropping it somewhere else. That's okay. Drop the notes wherever you want to, but you're definitely going to want to take notes. If you don't take notes, you can't take action, okay? So take notes so that we can take action. So step one. Step one in achieving myo momentum in your first course. Let's dive in. Identify your niche is the very first step. Now, myofunctional therapy in and of itself, a niche. However, what we want to make sure that we are doing is that we are identifying what it is that our specific passion is. Why did you get into myofunctional therapy? Take a second to really think about that. You can't be a master of everything within Mayo. There are certain people that you will work better with than others. I will tell you there are certain cases I've worked on that I've enjoyed much more than others. Being a master of everything and being a jack of all trades, I should say, makes you a master of none. So identify what your niche is. If you've learned already about myofunctional therapy, you know the ages and stages that we can serve and that we really treat people across the lifespan well. Where in that lifespan do you want to niche out? What's going to be your niche, niche, whatever you want to call it? Because you can work with just adults, just TMD. You want to master just TMD. You might have an office. You might have a colleague. You might have a, a connection in a office where they do splints, where they do TMJ work. And that is something that you've been passionate about. Maybe you've been working there and you want to serve in that capacity and you only want to work with TMD. So kids who are drooling with an open mouth, they got to find somebody else because it's not you. That's okay. We don't have to see everybody. So focus in on what you want. There are courses that are best for you if that's what you want. Only obstructive sleep apnea patients. If you only want to work with people so that you can help them overcome snoring, help them overcome, you know, obstructive sleep apnea, sleep disordered breathing, uh, parasomnias that may occur while, while they are sleeping, that is a niche. That is a thing, an area that you can service. You can master working with nasal hygiene, uh, sleep habits, you can become a sleep coach, you can really, really niche down deep into obstructive sleep apnea because it's so heavily layered. We know so much about sleep and we know nothing at the same time. So there's three things in life that you could say that for. One is space. We know more about space than we do about the next thing. Two, the ocean. And then three is sleep. Without a doubt, we know a lot about all of these things, but we don't know nearly enough because it is so vast. We still don't know why people sleep. And yes, I know that is a whole book. 
And Matthew Walker never answered that question, okay? He still doesn't know why we sleep, but that's okay. There's a whole niche for you if that's for the people you want to work with. Do you want to work with only preschoolers? That's a thing. That's becoming more my jam lately. I really do enjoy working with the preschool population. They're a fun group of kids. It's really interesting to be the person who people pay to come play with their children because that's all you're doing. We're having a great time and without them knowing about it, are learning. They're learning a lot. Only below age 12, you can work with children up to a certain point. You can make that only below age 16, only below 18, between 6 to 18. You can make it whatever you want to work with. Um, it doesn't have to be specific to like just that thing. But start to write this down. Who do I feel passionate about? So it didn't matter to me that my husband had a lot of issues and that he very well could have used a tongue tie release or obstructive sleep apnea or um, obstructive sleep apnea screening and a PSG. That didn't matter to me. That wasn't my focus. I was working in a pediatric office and I had issues with my own kids. My priority was working with children. I got to learn some of the other stuff later on. That way I could work with adults and service them better. But my passion was with children. So I had to master and niche down into working with children to make myself as successful as possible. There are other people who I've worked with and are taught or, or colleagues that only work in dental sleep medicine. So they understand the prosomnuses devices, the Dynaflex, they understand the Somnomed, they get what the different devices are, what works different in different situations, what's best for oral myofunctional therapy outcomes and your patient. How are you going to collaboratively work with these dental sleep medicine doctors who use a variety of appliances? They're not like your appliance providers who might just bio brace they actually have more of a vast network of dozens of appliances that they fall back on for numerous reasons. So you really have to niche down if that's going to be your thing. So who do you want to serve? Understand entirely where you're going to go with what you're going to be of service to this community. Then where are they? Where can you reach them? So if somebody can drop in the chat for me where it is that they um, are thinking that they want to work with people or what area they want to niche down into, drop it into the chat and let's talk about where you can reach them because there's a lot of different ways. So you can reach people within your own community. You can reach people in your practice. Okay, so I've got one here, sleep apnea. Okay, awesome. Only when working with people in sleep in, that'll be great too. If you're only working with people in sleep apnea and you don't say, let's say you don't work in an office that currently has an obstructive sleep apnea in your practice. Very good. You don't want to work with, um, um, you don't work in an office currently where there's obstructive sleep apnea services, where they're not doing dental sleep medicine. If that's the case, then what you're going to do is is you're going to look into your community. There are a lot of Facebook pages and groups dedicated to communities. There's also the Next Door app, also very good for community. And there are places where you can find communities and networks, lots of different websites that offer that kind of service. I would start looking into where are the obstructive sleep apnea groups? Where are the, you know, dads of such and such area? I'm in West Palm Beach, Florida, dads of West Palm Beach or dads of Palm Beach um, County. Where can I find those guys? Because I'm sure a lot of them are struggling with these issues. I might want to work with the moms because they're more likely to pay for their patient for pay for their husbands to stop snoring or to whatever or they may have their own issues where they're worried about themselves you know they may hear their husband snoring and they didn't realize they had a problem maybe they're start struggling with UARS or they might have their own obstructive sleep apnea issues 
where are they hanging out? Are they hanging out in those groups? If they are hanging out in those groups, we actually going to and traveling. Well, where would you travel if you had obstructive sleep apnea? You could go literally anywhere. There's a lot of great community poster boards. A really great practice I did once was I was able to go into a grocery store. I went to a grocery store, posted on a community post, had those little cutouts, and people would call me for it. Like, you can just post in a community board. Like, are you struggling with your sleep? Hate your CPAP? Come see me. We do exercises to get that gone. I mean, that's a big, bold claim that you really have to stand behind. So I don't recommend that. That was just me kind of talking off the cuff. But where are they hanging out? If they're in your community, is there an opportunity for you to leverage? On the internet, if I have obstructive sleep apnea, where am I going? Are there boards for that? Can I create a source for that? Can I create an obstructive sleep apnea support group for people in Palm Beach County? Because that would be something really great where I can now provide education within a group setting, market that online, and then also generate a wonderful continuous source of referrals and patients. And then you know what those people who know that they have obstructive sleep apnea are going to do? They're going to start talking to their physician. They're going to say, hey, I've been working with so and so who does this thing, this myo something. And that's how you can get your foot in the door with that physician, that sleep physician. When I look at a couple of other ones, ortho patients, you want to work just with ortho. Okay. If you want to work just with ortho, where are orthodontic patients? They're all parents. Okay. All of the parents. And it's such a sad, sad state of affairs where we positively, without a doubt, need have braces most of the time these days. So where are the ortho patients, all the parents? In the parents' community chats, they might be reading parent magazines. They might be reading the local magazines that actually do have those ads where all your pediatric dentists are advertising. Um, they're definitely going to be in your local stores. So I would, I'm thinking to myself like the Carters. I know that there are places where there are parents who are going, I would actually network with a lot of OTs. All of the OT places and the pediatric um, physical therapy places, those are going to be the places where I really know I can leverage having those connections. So you're going to get a lot of kids that are in those areas. You can network with the orthodontist, but I'm telling you, it is always much more compelling, significantly more compelling, what comes from their patient base. And this is a very interesting marketing tactic. Can you imagine, uh, well, all of us are professionals here, but can you imagine being a professional in a sort of you know, authoritative role, being a doctor, being a physician, and your patients come in one after the other, well, let's say it's three or four in a week, because that you would find to be odd. And they all mention this thing that you have no idea about, you can't speak to, and you don't understand, that would be really frustrating. Because for me, I would feel like, okay, now I really need to learn about this thing. So once you start getting into a lot of these communities, these groups, and you start working with these patients, you're working with these people, well, now then you can leverage the relationships that they already have with their providers to then get your foot in the door. Because now they're motivated. They need to learn. They need to see things. Okay. So you really got to think where can you reach these people? Where are they hanging out? How are you going to access them? And then who are they seeing is a big, big thing. Like who's working with them. So for the ortho patients, clearly orthodontists, but there's also oral maxillofacial surgeons that are working with them. Those doctors who are, you know, um, putting on the chains are expanding. That a wonderful conversation to have with an OMF, OMFS. <laughs> um, if you're thinking about the sleep apnea, you're working with a sleep physician, I would also consider functional medicine or a naturopath. I think those are really good also for obstructive sleep apnea. Pedodontist, you can work with, you can also work with a pediatrician, 
pediatricians are typically very difficult to bring on board. But if you get the patients talking to them first, if you send reports that are really thorough, in depth, and explain at a high quality, you're going to get in with a pediatrician. That is an absolute guarantee. That's been the only thing that's worked for me with pediatricians. They don't want you coming in cold. And we'll get to that in actually a second too. Oral facial pain specialists, if you're working with the people with TMJ um, that they're having disorders with, and it's of a muscular issue, not of a structural, okay? So if the bone's been worn down and grinded down, you, that's not you. That's not who you're working with. You're working with the muscular dysfunction. And a lot of times comes neuromuscular pain and referred pain and so forth. And so oral facial pain specialists really do like to talk to myofunctional therapists if you have not considered consider them. They are a newer dental specialty. Please consider them. They absolutely are people that you want to network with and, and get in, which really brings me to our next point. Step two, networking. So it's not enough to just know who they are, where they hang out, and who they work with. You have to actually start to get in with some of those people that they're working with, and you need to have your own connections so that you can spread them out so that they can go and see all the providers that they need. Because myofunctional therapy is amazing. It's wonderful. It's magical at times, but it is very rarely the only thing that somebody needs in order to get to true health and wellness. So let's go back to who you identified in step one. Where do they hang out? What do they read? Are they a connection? And what do you need to learn about their field? So these are questions that I want you to be able to answer for. Let's go back to the ortho patients one, or we can go to the sleep physicians one. Where do orthodontists hang out? Some people might say the AAO. Some people might say a local study club. Some people might say there's, you know, this, that, and the other. That you might know of things in the area. Um, there are some orthodontists who will go to the Chamber of Commerce. The very most underutilized tool is the holistic chamber of commerce. That is actually the best chamber of commerce for us in our specialty and our field and what we do. But I would say 100% you want to check out your local chamber of commerce when there are free networking events around. Who do you think gets all the referrals? A lot of adults are unhappy with their smile. A lot of adults understand that their children need braces. The very best place for an orthodontist to hang out is in that environment. And that's where I've met a couple too, at the regular chamber of commerce, not necessarily the holistic one. But if you're looking for a functional medicine provider, a naturopath, a biological dentist, you're going to find them at the holistic chamber of commerce. Like-minded people want to be with like-minded people, right? So what do they read? What kind of publications are they reading? Are they reading dentistry today? Are they reading dentistry IQ? Are they reading dental economics? Are they reading RDH magazine? Like, what is it that they're reading? What are the websites that you can maybe write something for? That way you can be an authority figure. You have to be able to be in a position where you can leverage your status, right? So you're an expert. I, I don't care if you've only taken one course and you feel really confused after it. Remember where you were before you took that course where you knew nothing and now you know 10 times nothing? You know significantly more than you did when you got in there. You're now an expert compared to 90% of the dental industry who can't coherently inform you what myofunctional therapy is and or how it can be leveraged for you know, patient success and outcomes. So you're already an authority figure. Become more of one. It helps you too. Every time I've written an article, I've learned, I've grown, and I've been able to articulate things better, to, under, to better explain to patients what it is that I'm going to provide of value. So if you're going to have conversations, if you're going to go to a chamber of commerce, wouldn't it make sense that you're already writing and understanding what it is that you can communicate to these practitioners? So submit an article. There's a lot of different places. It is not difficult. You literally just go to whatever magazine it is, your online publication that it is that you would like to run. And I guarantee you there's a section or a page that will talk about submitting an article. And it's that simple. You want to be published. It's never been easier to be published, okay? 
Are they a connection? If they are a connection on LinkedIn or Facebook, more likely LinkedIn. If your LinkedIn game is not tight, you need to get it tight. Okay. That's where everybody's hanging out. That is a professional. There are some people who don't really manage their LinkedIn accounts very well, but I'm telling you more often than not, people are on LinkedIn and they're looking for meaningful connections. There are a lot of people who will spam your junk box. A lot of people who will send you things that don't make any kind of sense. That is disregarded for now. Your LinkedIn needs to be where you're posting content that is going to inform and educate the ideal people that you're trying to connect with. Because the very first thing they do when you get a LinkedIn connection request is they go to look at your profile. They want to look at your education. They want to look at who you are and how you work and who you serve. And then they're going to see if they want to approve. I always send a connection request. Hey, I'd love to get to know more about you and your practice. Um, looking forward to connecting. Hopefully we can connect here. It's super easy, small, simple. A lot of people will be like happy to connect. A lot of times I hit that automatic reply, happy to connect. And that's their invitation to now talk to me. Hey, Carice, I see that you're a hygienist. Would you like to work for, no, no, no. You may see RDH somewhere in my profile, but I am not. I have written down there, you know, author, myofunctional therapist, educator, yada, yada, yada. I have a lot of things written there, but none of them are RDH. <laughs> so you will get a little bit of spam. But once you have a connection, that's your direct line to them. And then you need to understand and know what you need to learn about their field. There is nothing more irritating than someone trying to reach out to connect with you, but they have no idea what it is that you do. If they think that a hygienist is just a tooth scraper and they're trying to come to you and sell something to you and they're talking to you like you're some bimbo that just scra scrapes teeth, you want nothing to do with them, right? All ENTs are not the same. All functions medical medicine providers are not the same. All naturopaths are not the same. There are niches within every field. There are people who are more focused and have a target for certain things than they do others. Take some time to research. What is it that they're passionate about? What are they talking about? What do you see featured prominently on their website? If that's something that you can look at, what is it that they specialize in? If they specialize in a certain procedure, let's say an ENT, and they specialize in Inspire. A lot of times, maybe they probably aren't using that as a first line. There are some who are using that as a first line. So probably they aren't using that as a first line. But if they are, I would want to learn more about Inspire first before I reach out to them. And then I'm asking really insightful questions because that's going to get them and their minds going and racing. Like, oh, wow, they really want to know. Like, what's new and exciting in ENT technology? I see Inspire and I just really am curious as to whether or not that's the best thing that's out. There might be some other things that are out that I'm unsure of or I'm unaware of. And while I direct patients in certain places, I would really love to know how you're utilizing this thing. Awesome. I'd love to chat with you. You know why? Because everybody wants to know what's in it for them. It sounds like you're building a bridge. You're not building up a wall. You're not like, hey, I'm a myofunctional therapist and I would love to connect with you so that you could send me patients. I hope, I sincerely hope nobody is just going around saying that because that is the wrong thing to say. But you want to make sure that when you're going in, you're going in and leading with what's in it for them. You want to learn more. You have patients that you're directing in a certain way. You're guiding them to what maybe might be best for them. Hmm, I want to know more about you because it sounds like you might have some referrals for me. You might have some people that I might need to work with. Awesome. This is fantastic. We're building up bridges and we're breaking down walls because a lot of people were so oversold. We're so oversold. The price of a Super Bowl commercial is too high because a lot of people on their phones during the commercials, a lot of people are muting, getting a snack, going to the bathroom. Granted, those are very interesting commercials, none better than the Kanye commercial hands down, that was probably the best thing that's happened. But it is 
a market that is saturated. Everybody wants to market to you. It's occurring naturally in just your scrolls. You're scrolling through Facebook. You're scrolling through TikTok. You're scrolling through Instagram. You're scrolling just on Google. And the very first thing that always pops up is some type of ad. So we don't want to be marketed to. We really would just like to enjoy our lives. So it's always going to build up a wall if the first thing you're stepping into do is something about you. So step back from you and step into what's in it for them and how can you learn more about them, okay? Here's some key tips for networking. I don't want you just going out thinking you can do a lunch and learn. I can do a lunch and learn. It's no problem. Lunch and learn and really easy, simple. I just put together a little slide deck and I'm going to go and I'm going to talk to these offices. Eh, wrong answer. Do not go and lunch and learn until you know how to lunch and leverage. Okay. I'm going to repeat that because there's somebody in the back who didn't hear it. Do, do not go to lunch and learn unless you know how to lunch and leverage is when you go in, you're going to fail. You're going to absolutely fail. And the only way you know your objective is if they inform you of it. Okay, so I always ask before I go into any sort of lunch and learn situation, if somebody's requesting a lunch and learn or if I'm offering one, by the end of the hour that I am able to lecture to you about this topic, what is it that you absolutely positively must know? Because an hour isn't a lot to teach you the grand scope of myofunctional therapy. What is it that you absolutely must know? Well, Carissa, I've taken some courses already, and so I feel like I've kind of got the foundation. Give me a little bit more advanced, and if you can dive into TMJ, I would love that. Awesome. Why on earth would I spend an hour going in there talking to somebody who's taken courses, who understands, and who really wants to know about TMJ? Why would I go in there talking to them about mouth breathing and children and sleep or whatever it is I want to talk about? They don't care. They're not going to refer patients to me that has nothing to do with what they want to know and how they're going to actually utilize this information. So I would 100% lean into what it is that they want to hear, what they want to know, and round it out with how working with you helps to facilitate those goals. That is it. That is it. You want to leave them almost salivating for more information, okay? If they want to know how is this practically applicable to them and dentistry, don't go in there talking about mouth breathing. We understand mouth breathing, dry mouth, caries, decay. I, no, go in there and really lean in to what's going on, vertical bony defects, go into periodontal disease and how how a lot of oral facial myofunctional disorders changes the salivary content for the patients. And so now that's gonna have an impact on oral health, periodontal pocketing and so forth. Wow, this seems like it's applicable to everyday dentistry because you're talking about perio, something everybody cares about. I know a lot of us get super passionate about airway, but trust me when I say, all of dentistry would be doing airway if everybody cares. Nobody cares about airway. Very few dentists care about airway. And that's the realest thing I'm going to say to you this whole evening. Okay. Nobody cares. Everybody cares about what they care about. What's going to make them money for their office. What's going to enable them to be able to move forward, push the needle forward in their practice, in their profession, in their enjoyment and their joy, sorry, and fulfillment in their career. So talk to them about the things that actually help them. If they want to talk about TMJ, talk about TMJ. If they want to talk about tongue tie because they're a release provider, talk about tongue tie and myo. If they want to talk about general dentistry, talk about mouth guards, the detriment of mouth guards, why we wouldn't use mouth guards, what's the alternative, what's going on with perio health, da 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 da. Talk to them about the things that actually make sense to talk about, okay? So do not lunch and learn, do not teach and treat, do not do anything unless you know how to leverage it. Otherwise, you're wasting your time. You're wasting your time. That is time that can be spent. Hell, spend that hour with your loved ones, okay? Second tip, get to know the gatekeeper. You absolutely, positively, without a doubt, must know the gatekeeper, okay? Everybody, like I said, is supremely marketed to, if you think you're the only person walking into a dental office with something to sell, you probably have not heard of all the different appliances and technology and you know services that are out there that have regional people who are 
on the ground trying to make sales. They're coming into the office all the time. You may have seen them in your office sometimes where they come in and they're just sitting and they're waiting in the waiting room. They're hoping to get to talk to somebody. And they probably will never talk to somebody because Megan at the front is like, no, I'm, I'm not going to let them in. Sorry, the doctor's in surgery. Oops, sorry, it ran over. No, doctor said, come back on Thursday. And the doctor doesn't care. The doctor won't be available on Thursday either. So get to know the gatekeeper. What is the gatekeeper like? I always try to, you know, take care of my gatekeepers. Like, hey, Megan, I bought this just for you. So don't share it with anybody, okay, girl? I know your favorite chocolate's Godiva. You told me that last time when I came to bring the first box. So this is just for you, okay? I appreciate you giving my information last time to the doctor. And so I brought back some Godiva just for you. And, you know, I'm looking forward to connecting sometime in the future. And then I might not come back for two, three weeks. And then I come back and guess what I have? I have good Godiva and more information. Hey, I haven't heard from you, but look, I brought you some more Godiva because girl, I just, I just love your energy. I love your vibe. And I would really love it if we're able to chat with the doctor. You think there's some time you can carve out at some point, maybe today or tomorrow? More often than not, you catch more flies with honey. I tell that to my children all the time. And so I'm going <laughs> to treat you guys like my children. Catch those gatekeepers with all of the honey, okay? So make sure that you are really, really being as sweet as possible. My last tip is that direct is always best. If you are able to attend a networking event at a chamber of commerce, at a holistic chamber of commerce, at a study club, if you're able to go in person and meet the doctor or meet whoever the professional is that you're trying to network with directly, please do. Those meetings go so much better than you you cold opening yourself by going into an office, okay? That's a way of bypassing the gatekeeper. If you can also message directly on LinkedIn, directly on Instagram, and you're very, very specific with why you're messaging. Hey, doc, I saw you just posted an article in such and such magazine, and I read it. I really loved it. My key takeaway was such and such and such, and I just wanted to give you some kudos. Would love to chat with you some time. Maybe get to pick your brain a little. Why wouldn't I respond to that? Anybody have any good answers as to why I wouldn't respond to that? I'm going to guess in advance before looking that it's going to be no. There's no good answer for me to not respond to that. That's actually really well written as to, yes, I need to respond. You're giving me kudos for something that I just recently did. I'm going to talk to you. I don't need a gatekeeper. I'm going to talk to you and we're going to now connect. Okay. So step three, build your confidence. There is nothing quite like step three. You've got to be able to build your confidence, okay? So you're going in. You got to be strategic with your time. Build up your testimonials. The best way to build up testimonials is to start doing work. You're not going to like this. You're going to hate this. So cover your ears if you don't want to hear it. But start working with people for free. And it doesn't have to be a full case. It really, really doesn't. It just needs to be maybe your neighbor, you know, has been snoring really loudly. You hear it from your house and you're like, hey, I just finished this um, course of study. I am continuing to advance my education and my knowledge. I know some exercises that might be able to help you sleep just a little better. And I would love to work with you in exchange for a review. Awesome. Do four sessions, you know, meet with them once a week, every week or whatever, meet with them however frequently that you would like to, that you feel comfortable with. Once they start feeling better or you've given them a solid foundation of support, they have a nasal hygiene routine, they have their sleep hygiene down, maybe they're using a nasal dilator or they're using mouth tape or they're doing this, that, and the other, and they're starting to feel better. Good. You're done. That's it. We need a testimonial ASAP. OK, build your testimonials that way. The more testimonials you have, the more backing you have, the absolute better you are off in business. All right. And then they'll also refer you out. Like you think if you help your neighbor, your neighbor isn't going to tell somebody that they just had this done. Absolutely. Your HOA is going to be all about you if you have an HOA. I'm, I'm a little bit um, tra traumatized in Florida with HOAs, but that's fine. OK, I want you to work for collaborative learning when it makes sense. So there are some providers 
that I network with that I talk to and they're like, oh, I have a child and you just know where that conversation is going. Oh, my kid. And they're about to start ortho. And I'm really concerned about that. Oh, I would love to work with your child. Um, just gratis pro bono. No worries about it. And in the case, I would love if you could work closely with your child and maybe collaboratively, we can learn a little bit more together. I'll throw a couple of new things in that I have and we'll kind of make it work. But as I'm learning, as you're learning, I want us to continue to communicate that way we can really be collaboratively gaining as much as possible out of this. Okay. Don't do it for everybody, only when it makes sense. You do not have to treat everybody's child for free, all right? And don't judge people's pockets. So don't think just because they have a practice, that means that they have money. There are some people who are struggling out there. You, you don't know who's going through what. So sometimes collaborative learning can be really, really appreciated and it pays back tenfold in referrals and or just in what you've learned. Even if you get zero referrals, I guarantee you you're going to learn something that is going to transform how confident you are in what you do. Okay. Every time you see a case that is something new, it's going to transform you. Join or start a study club and not like some online study club. Start like a real study club. And no, not an airway study club. Because again, no one cares. No one cares. You care. No one else cares. Okay. Yes, there are some people you might be able to start an airway study club and everybody there is going to care, but you'll grow a lot faster for your study club. And I'm trying, believe me, you will impact more people if it's just a regular dental study club. If it is a community provider study club where you're learning about other disciplines, where you guys are learning about each other, if you have a dental study club, there is nothing that has been more effective for dental study clubs for me personally as a myofunctional therapist than the person who comes in and is like, okay, so I have this person, they have all these veneers and they're doing this and the grinding of the teeth, it snapped off one person piece of this thing and I have no idea how I'm supposed to tackle this. The other doctors in the room are talking about, okay, you should do this, you should do that, maybe a night guard, do da 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 da. And then when everybody's done, I raise my hand. So here are the oral facial dysfunctions that I am seeing just by looking at the photos that you provided. There's asymmetry between this muscle and this muscle. Da, 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 like and I start going into that. And people are like, oh what oh wow, she knows something. Yeah, much more beneficial than sitting in a room with a bunch of people who already know and understand what it is that you do and they're not interested. <laughs> they're there or if they are interested, they're already referring you people. Like these are not the people you need to be sitting around and speaking to every single month or however frequently your study club is is going on. Don't, don't speak to the echo chamber. Be a thought leader within your group. I think that that's more effective in a significant amount of ways. So start a study club. Maybe it's just dentistry. Maybe it's just, you know, you get a bunch of local professionals together and everybody talks about what they do. You might find a good accountant in there, a good bookkeeper, like who knows? Okay. And then follow those who you want to be like. So there's a lot of people who follow everybody. All right. So you might be like, oh, all of the Mayo accounts. I have to follow all the Mayo accounts. What you're going to get is an echo chamber. You're going to get an echo chamber of a bunch of people who agree with you. And nine times out of 10, you're never going to expand your thought and you're not going to become a thought leader and you won't be exposed to thought leaders because the only people you'd be exposed to are the people who are saying and repeating the exact same thing that you already know to be true. We need dissenting opinions. So follow those who you want to be like and don't make it exclusive to airway or Mayo or dentistry. It can go down a different path. I follow a lot of business people. That's how I learn how to be effective, how I learn to communicate. I follow people who communicate in the way that I would like to communicate. How do I structure a presentation? I'm going to follow somebody who is structuring presentations, who I've seen, who I admire, who is doing all the things that I want to do. You follow those who you want to be like because you ever heard that term like, one bad apple spoils a whole bunch. Yeah, that rotten fruit, it will contaminate everything else. There is a lot of echo chamber that goes on currently. And don't get me on that soapbox. That's a whole TED talk right there. But I'll
a lot of echo chamber that goes on in the field right now that is contributing to the continued demise of dentistry within this profession, as opposed to elevating thought and coming up with new leadership tactics that are going to advance us forward. So follow those who you would like to be like. If there is somebody out there who's making a million dollars selling widgets, and you would like to make a million dollars, but you don't necessarily wanna sell widgets, there is a process, a system, a tool, a technique, a something that they're using to get to that million dollars that maybe you can tweak and get into your system. I'm telling you, there is nothing more effective than listening to people who you wanna be like and really following in their footsteps in your own way. So step out of the echo chamber. That's gonna be your very first thing, okay? And anytime that you find somebody who is somebody you admire, is somebody who you want to be like, or is somebody who, you know, you've seen their steps and you want to reach out to them, please do. Because there's nothing more that people love to talk about than themselves. Everybody loves to talk about themselves, okay? I would tell you that the best conversation I've had in the last two months is probably a conversation I had earlier today. And I don't know, because it doesn't tell me for Facebook. She may be on or she may not be on. But a former student mentor, uh, mentee that I used to work with, clearly, um, contacted me to reach out about speaking, about speaking on stages in dentistry and panel speaking and so forth. And I had just the most honest conversation about that industry, what goes on within it, why I'm not really super pro, let's go that way. And being super honest about it, I was able to give a lot of great advice based on my own experience. Uh, that was not to discourage, absolutely not to discourage, but I wish somebody told me. It felt like I was talking to the younger version of me. And in talking to the younger version of me, I'm like, hey, these are the things I need you to know. Because again, it, while that person contacted me to talk about them and what they want to do, it was really more about me <laughs> because everybody loves to talk about themselves, okay? And you're lying if you say you don't. I'm the world's best listener. I wind up in a lot of conversations where people are telling me deep, deep, intimate things about themselves because I will just sit there and I will listen and I will allow you to trauma dump and I will absorb all of that. But at the same time, you know, I'm going to walk away from that like, wow, that person does not really care about me at all because I didn't get to speak. But, you know, everybody loves to talk about themselves. So anybody you admire, follow them and ask them questions. I guarantee you they will speak with you unless it's Gary Vee or like, you know, you're trying to talk to somebody who's way too prominent for you to actually, you know, you can't reach out to Tony Robbins and expect him to reply. It's just not going to happen. Okay. I did hear that Tony Robbins, though, is into Mayo a little bit. He actually has a uh, Manda track. So that's a fun fact. Okay, here are the things that you do not, N-O-T, not have to do when getting started. You do not have to have social media accounts everywhere. You don't need a TikTok, a Facebook, an Instagram, a Snapchat, an X, a formerly Twitter. You do not need to have all those accounts. If you have something that you know you can absolutely leverage to your advantage, master that first. Grow your following there. Do you need a big following? No, it's not about the width of your reach. I don't care how many people are following you. And frankly, in Airway, this is how much you know people don't care about Airway. The biggest accounts don't have hundreds of thousands of people following accounts in Airway. And it's not hundreds of people following them. It's going to be a smaller amount. Um, whereas if I look up like a health coach or an ancestral health coach, professional. They're going to have hundreds of thousands. Some of them have millions of followers, people who are all into that kind of stuff. Uh, so not the width of impact. It is how much you are able to impact them. I don't have the biggest followings. I don't have the biggest followings, but I'll tell you that when I'm I'm the one who's like out and about and doing all the things and you see me in Africa and you see me in South America and you see me doing all this stuff and I'm the sole provider for my family of six. There's something that's going on with the depth of my reach that isn't going on with the width of others that you don't see them doing that stuff. That's all I'm going to say. I'm going to leave that there. Okay. So 
it's not how many people you speak to. It's how deep you go with those people, how much you connect. So master one or two or whatever you can. Do what you can. I'm a big believer in income producing activities. If it's not making you money, it does not make sense. So don't stay on social media if you're not making money. Don't be posting. Make sure that every bit of work that you do, it actually matters. You do not have to have an intricate website. People don't care. The first, they need to know everything that they need to know right off the bat. If they do, do not find that, they're gone. On to the next, okay? There is a little bit of this, this niche where people will stay along a longer time. You probably have up to a minute, honestly, because if they're looking for a myofunctional therapist, it's not like there's thousands of us. There's hundreds at best. So there's hundreds of us. And so they're looking through and they already know that they want myofunctional therapy. They're just looking for a little bit more information about you, who you are. And so we'll talk about that in a second. So you don't have to have an intricate website, but you do need to have a presence. You don't need to invest in another intro course. Please don't. That's my pet peeve. You know what really grinds my gears? People who invest in multiple intro courses. I admit that used to be me. Mm -mm. Never again. Never again. Okay. And you do not have to invest in mentorship. The very best education. If you're going to invest in mentorship, you might as well just do your collaborative cases where you're going to do some pro bono work for some of the providers in your area. You're going to learn more that way than you will out of working with a mentor point blank period. Okay. You do, yes, you must purchase a domain and set up a simple site. Your site needs to have three things on it. Okay. Who you work with, how they can contact you and start to work with you. So your process and then more about you. So granted the about you is probably like the least involved section that you need to have on there, but you definitely need to give them a little bit about you, especially if there's passion behind your story. So I work with a lot of adults and surprisingly, my story is very much embedded in my children, but because it's embedded in my children and out of my four children, they all manifested very differently. It winds up speaking to different parts of their younger self. So my about me section is essentially my story in Mayo. And you need to have your story in Mayo. You need to have what brings you, what brings you joy, what sparks your passion about this. But it doesn't have to be lengthy. What they really need to know is who you work with, what's your niche, and how can they work with you? What's your process? What does it involve? Do you need to put pricing on your website? You don't have to. I do it out of the sake of transparency. I leave it up there. So, you know, whatever. Feel free to peruse my website if you want a little bit of guidance. Um, my website is not the best, most flashy website, but it gets the job done. So who might say anything else? You need to have a Google My Business page. The very first thing, it's a verb. You very first thing people are going to do when they hear about myofunctional therapy, this rant and the thing that like every senior me, you need to pop up. If you don't pop up, you don't exist, okay? You don't exist. They're going to find somebody who does telehealth, and it could be somebody who lives right down the block from you who has no idea that you work in an office or you work from your home or you work wherever in their general area because they're not going to deep dive. Nobody's going to come searching for you. You need to be as readily available as possible. Google always prioritizes their things first. So a Google My Business is going to pop up. And I have to tell you that if you have never searched for search terms, like you need to go to websites like askthepublic.com. When you go to those websites and you look at the terms, people are not searching for oral facial myology. Get that out of your vernacular. People are not searching for oral facial myofunctional therapy. If anything, people are searching for OMT near me, myotherapist near me, or myofunctional therapist near me. Those are the top things. Everything else by leaps and bounds is so different. So my practice is called the myo spot. If you were looking for me, whether you're looking in New Jersey or Florida, in both places, it says the myospot hyphen myofunctional therapy, because those are the words people are searching for. There was a point in time um, late, early last year that I was paying like $500 a month to an SEO person who was really like ramping up all my stuff. And that was one of the best tips I ever got. 
Take out all that oral facial myology stuff. No one's looking for that. That's going to be a waste of time on your website. Please put myofunctional therapy somewhere nearby. Because this next tip, we're like, nobody looking for the myo spot either. Nobody cares what the myo spot is. What we're looking for is myofunctional therapy. So until you're Walmart, until you're Amazon, and people care about your business name, you got to put myofunctional therapy next to it. So if you're going to have a Google My Business page, throw in myofunctional therapy, myotherapy, or OMT, throw that in somewhere next to you, okay? You have to establish an online presence. If you're not online, you don't exist. Even if that's just a Facebook page, there's sometimes you will Google something like your favorite restaurant and they don't have a landing page, but they have a Facebook page and their Facebook page hosts the menu. And so you will go there and you'll look at the menu and you'll be like, oh, okay, this is something I can share or whatever. So you have to have some sort of online presence because if people can't find you, they can't work with you. And you do have to invest in some software. I would not invest in another myofunctional therapy introductory course. I would absolutely invest in software. So you're going to invest in software like your, your Electrum. Charm EHR is free until you have a large enough base where then you're paying if you're seeing more than 50, if you're having more than 50 visits, having more than 50 appointments a month, then you pay 25 cents per. So you start out at like $25 and that 50 cents per, I'm sorry. You start out at like $25 a month and then you go forward. There are a lot of people who will recommend right off the bat, jump into simple practice. Well, that's ridiculous. Do you have a, that much money? You can always transfer th things over afterwards, but start then you can move forward and get something else. Um, forms, if you need forms and you have to have forms filled out and you want to keep them for like electronic signature, maybe let's say you're doing only telehealth, then invest in PDF filler, the best amount of money you could spend. DocuSign, Adobe Sign, those things are significantly more expensive than PDF filler. Both Charm and PDF filler, a little bit of a learning curve in order to be able to get them to master them. but Trust me, the best investment you will possibly ever have, okay? So just a little bit of time for some questions. I know that, you know, it's been a little spotty here with my connection. I have no idea why we have really good internet and I'm like plugged in and so it's really bad. I must have too many windows open. But if there's any questions, drop them in the chat right now. Um, I will hang on for a little bit and see if anybody has any questions. If there are no questions, then I'm going to drop off. But if I do drop off before you've gotten to finish typing your question, if it is really long, then please absolutely positively, you know, just allow me some grace. I will come on to whatever platform you're watching because I am streaming. I will check all of the platforms and make sure that I am answering your questions. I got a thank you. You are so very welcome. I hope all of this information was super useful for you. I hope it helps you as you're trying to gain momentum when you're getting started. There are so many people that struggle and I'm tired of seeing it. And so look, we just had a whole complimentary lecture. Um, oh, somebody said, any advice on what's happening in New York with RDHs who are practicing OMT? Nothing's happening in New York right now. If the the board decides that it is not in the scope of RDHs, which is so very interesting and almost laughable to me because we know that it's not in the scope in any state. So it's definitely not in the scope of New York. It's not in the scope of New Jersey, Connecticut, Pennsylvania, New England. It's not in the scope anywhere. Absolutely anywhere. Um, so them ruling on it is really as simple as Maryland's already done that before Iowa. Uh, at Texas, I believe, had done that at some point in time, too. So, yeah, I, I don't think anything is happening right now in New York. I think there's a whole lot of panic, and I would highly recommend that you join the IAH if you are worried, because unlike other organizations, and yes, I threw a little shade just now, but unlike other organizations, the IAH actually has retained a lawyer to pursue these issues in a legal way so that we could set in legitimate precedents. We're not going to sit back and do nothing. We're actually going to be proactive and try to create safety for hygienists. It's a passion of mine. Uh, next question. Oh, is this recorded? 
it is recorded. You're going to be able to have access to it. YouTube, LinkedIn, Facebook. Uh, Facebook is in the Mayo community. If you're on Facebook, Facebook user, yes. If you're on Facebook asking that question, yes, absolutely. You'll be able to find it right here in this group. Um, I'm not going to take it down. I don't take any of these down. I'll be here every week throwing lives out at you. Please send me whatever it is you want to learn about. I am happy to talk to you about it. Do you know if these those programs are available in Canada? So I'm going to assume that you're asking about uh, like courses available in Canada. Maybe if you could provide a little bit of clarity for me, that would be great. But are there Mayo courses in Canada? Absolutely. Um, are there ooh, like PDF filler? Is that what you were thinking of? Or like Charm Electronic Health Records? They should absolutely. They should absolutely be available in Canada. PDF filler are more likely than Charm, but they should be. I would look it up. A lot of times you guys are dots. CA, right? So pdffiller.ca is probably what I would check for charm.ca. Hopefully. I don't even think it's charm, ehr.com. I don't think it is. So that one might be wrong, but pdffiller.ca, see if that works. Hopefully that, that provides you a little bit of relief. Okay. Perfect. Thank you guys for being with me tonight. I have to run and uh, go to my course now, but that you guys spent this whole hour with me. And I look forward to talking to you again next week. Hopefully you get to see my face then, but have a great evening.